Hello viewers, thanks for choosing Property Focus, your window into the world of architecture, building construction and real estate. In today's episode, we're addressing legal loopholes that have exposed apartment owners to unscrupulous property developers. So currently, apart apartment owners do not own the land beneath their units and hold no title to show ownership. Instead, they own a share of the management company, which in turn owns the land. This has proved to be a bit dicey because we have had a number of reports of developers using the mother title to take bank loans and when they default, guess who comes for the title? The banks. We have the Land Cabinet Secretary Farida Karune and she tells us how she's dealing with these cases. Three things we are looking for. We are looking for integrity, we are looking for completeness and accuracy of the record. But before that, a simple step-by-step -step guide to purchasing an apartment in Kenya. Now just a recap to when we last did this. You know, with and they say in real estate that location is the most important thing when you're purchasing real estate. Mm -hmm. As a young person, you have a whole future ahead of you. Take advantage now to purchase the apartment. We have a lawyer to simply tell us and take us through the step-by-step -step processes of buying an apartment. Get your cup of coffee, tea or chocolate and welcome to yet another amazing episode. I'm your host, Peter Ngigi. Now, everyone hopes to own a property as homeowners sprout across the country to own apartments. Now, we're going to have a chat with a lawyer to tell us the step-by-step -step processes of purchasing an apartment. Thank you for coming onto the show. Welcome. Tell us about yourself. Thank you, Peter, uh, also for having me. My name is Brenda Ogera of Ogera Law. Um, I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. I've been in practice for seven years. This is actually my eighth year. Um, and so far, so good. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, tell us about Brenda. <laughs> so Brenda is an advocate uh, who practices um, mm -hmm. conveyancing matters. Yes. We also do commercial mm -hmm. and corporate law here. Okay. Um, we also handle family law. So that entails matters to do with the uh, succession, matters to do with uh, uh, wills, um, children, and divorce. So while we're here, tell us about buying property. So buying an apartment really should be easy, but it never is in Kenya, as we all know, yes. right? Yeah. Um, you first of all, of course, have to get an advocate to help you with the due diligence. To do due diligence, we are referring to your searches. Okay. You have to conduct that first, just to know that there are no encumbrances on the property that you want to purchase. Um, once that is done, a sale agreement will be drafted for you, of course, upon uh, agreeing on the you know, important um, issues, and we are talking about purchase price, ETC. So once that is done, um, as, and, as, and the sale agreement has been drawn up, you can have that signed, put in a deposit. It's always about 10% uh, of the purchase price. And uh, once that is done, um, registration now uh, takes center stage. So that's where your advocate now, you know, tries to have this title um, registered in your name. Okay. Yes. Okay. So is the Sectional Properties Act welcomed by the legal fraternity? The Sectional Properties Act is welcome in most quarters, mm -hmm. myself included. Mm -hmm. However, I was actually having a, a, a talk with a colleague recently, who, a stakeholder, not an advocate. And uh, he was not happy about, uh, you know, Arbisasa coming into play and the Sectional Properties Act. Yeah. Yes. But uh, for the Sectional Properties Act, I'm happy because um, we are talking about um, proprietors yes. enjoying um, their rights now, you know, in terms of having individual titles mm -hmm. for their properties. Yes. And that helps and goes a long way in terms of protecting their interests. Mm -hmm. So these developers can take loans with these properties? Yes, yes. That will be hard to, to do because yes. the minute um, these individual titles have been registered, yes. the mother title is done away with. Yes. So once that is cancelled, you definitely try and uh, eradicate that issue of charges being, you know, um, charged to your property. Yeah. How is Adisasa benefiting the real estate market? Uh, the Sasa is helping us by digitizing the entire process. And in that, we are trying to remove all these um, 
you know, all these intermediaries yeah. that were in the process initially. Yeah. So th as I mentioned, there's a colleague of mine who was not happy, yeah. but uh, let's pray that it actually works. So it cuts out the bureaucracy. It cuts out the whole bureaucracies that yes. come with it. And we all know in land matters, there's the whole issue of facilitation fees. Yes, yes, yes. yes which clients never like seeing, yes. but it's, a, a, you know, it's something that it's a necessary evil. Yeah. So yeah, le let's hope that it actually helps eradicate that. Well, give us your parting shot. Um, my parting shot, Peter, would be to encourage every person out there, anybody who is, you know, um, interested in purchasing property, definitely have, have yourself a lawyer, an advocate, who will actually guide you in the step-by-step -step process and ensure that your interests are definitely taken care of without losing a single coin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming onto the show. Thank you so much, Peter, for having me. Brilliant, you. brilliant. I'm sure you're more informed. We're taking a short break, but when we're back, we're going to have a conversation with the CS of Lance herself to tell us about the radical changes that are happening in the ministry. Stay tuned. And welcome back from the break and thanks for keeping it property focused. Now you sort of want to get a pen and paper into this one and lean in as we get a picture of what the government is doing to better facilitate seamless transactions when it comes to land matters. CS Farida Karune has introduced a new radical change in the real estate market that will see many find land processes easy and enjoyable. High impact is of note and we had a pleasure of having a conversation around RD Sasa sectional property and find the local solution to local land problems. Let's go have a chat with her and find out a little bit more. Well, first of all, thank you very much for coming on to the show. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, we all know you, but for those who just don't, tell us about yourself. My name is Farida Karone, the Cabinet Secretary for Land and Physical Planning. I've been in the job. This is my fourth year now. Started in 2018. Prior to that, I was in media, and I'm now happy to be a public servant. Tell us about RD Sasa. RD Sasa is a digital land information management system. It was uh, deployed or launched on the 27th of April of uh, this year, 2021. It's a system that has been in the making by government for more than 26 years. And this is because we've been struggling a lot with our land records. We were having loss of records, some records were being stolen, and others were just basically deteriorating with age, because as you can imagine, some of them date way back before independence during the colonial time. So it was becoming a critical decision for government to put these records in a platform that is secure, in a platform that we can trace, in a platform that you can audit. Because the problem with manual records, sometimes it's difficult to know what is happening to the record. But on a digital platform, should anything happen to that record, you would know, because there's an audit trail. So Adisasa is really a deployment platform for management of uh, land in Kenya. Our intention is to cover the whole country by the end of next year. We started in Nairobi last uh, two months ago, thereabouts, but we are still yet to stabilize in Nairobi. We hope to do so by the end of July, June. We have two registries in Nairobi, but to date only one registry is live, is on board. That is the Nairobi registry. We have yet another registry called the Central Registry that we hope to start bringing on board in the month of July. It was supposed to be May, but we are a bit delayed because as I will explain later, management of data is a big problem because as we have uh, tried to critique this data, to interrog interrogate the data for three things we are looking for. We are looking for integrity, we are looking for completeness and accuracy of the record. We have found that uh, a lot of our records do not have all the three elements. And for a record to be on this platform, it must have those three elements. So it's taking us a bit of time to ensure that all our records are compliant in terms of the parameters that we are looking for. But hopefully by the end of July, August, the entire city county of Nairobi will be on live on the, on the platform. And then we'll begin to deploy in the other counties that neighbor Nairobi, Moranga, Kiambu, Kajado and Machakos. Speaking of documents, what documents are needed to register onto the platform? Our platform, you just need your ID. Because what we have done, we have integrated with other government databases. We integrated with KRA, with IPRS. IPRS is a database on population services. 
we have uh, integrated with the uh, with business registration services and all agencies of government that have data sets to do with population data. So when you log on you with your ID, the serial number of your ID, automatically the system will pull all these other databases of government to ensure that it is actually you, Peter, re re registering on the platform. Yes. So to start, you just need your ID. Now you mentioned the registry, Nairobi Registry and the Central Registry. Please distinguish between the two. Nairobi City County has two registries. There's a registry called Nairobi Registry and there's another registry called the Central Registry. Both of these are in Nairobi City County. The only distinction between these two registries is the legal framework that is used to document the rights in land. In the Nairobi Registry, we use something called Registered Land Act, but in the Central Registry, we use the Registration of Title Acts and we use the Government Land Act. So it's really the legal framework that governs management of records in that registry. Otherwise, it's basically just land records on, on, on the two registries. The only other distinction between Nairobi Registry and Central Registry is the Central Registry has records from other parts of the country the former colonial White Islands. All those titles are still in the central registry. And that is why we are saying that as soon as we finish digitizing, we are going to close that registry because what will happen, we'll migrate those records to their home counties, wherever they come from. Yeah. If an owner claims to be the rightful owner of a particular parcel of land, but has incomplete data, what then happens then? What happens is, uh, we have for instance about 28,000 landowners whose ownership documents are incomplete. So what we are going to do at some point, we are going to have to gazette the 28,000 land parcels so that the owners can bring their documents. Because as I said, Peter, this platform is built to ensure integrity of data, to ensure completeness of data and accuracy of record. So if, for instance, your land parcel lacks one thing, maybe it doesn't have a SAPE plan or it doesn't have an ownership document or it, it misses any form of document, what we shall ask you to do is uh, come to us, bring your record so that you help us complete your record because we are trying to, to do two things with that kind of decision. First, we are, we are trying to ensure that you are the rightful owner of that record, that you are not claiming to be the owner, yet you are not the owner. Secondly, we are trying to ensure that once government guarantees that record, it is actually the correct record. We don't want to put on the platform a, a, a document that is not the correct record, because we don't want somebody else to come and say, by the way, you gave Peter my land because we didn't interrogate properly and we didn't compare all the data sets. The beauty of this platform, we are integrating all our data sets from Survey of Kenya, from Land Administration, Land Registration, Valuation, all our departments. The data sets are integrated. And for that record to be accurate, all the data sets must say the same thing. Your survey document must give the land to you. Your land admin data must give that land to you. Your registration document should do the same. So once we integrate all these data sets, we are saying, if they all tally, then rightfully that document is yours, that land is yours, and we'll put it on the platform, and we'll tell you with certainty that, Peter, this land belongs to you, and nobody's going to take it away from you. But if it's incomplete, then you help us. That's why we are telling Kenyans, if you're, you, you come to the platform, and you find that your record is not there, there's no cause for alarm. Call us, we have a 24-hour customer care support system, Come to us, bring your record, we shall help you reconstruct the record or rebuild the record so that your record on the platform is complete. However, if you have land that does not belong to you, then that's a problem because we will not allow you to dispossess another Kenyan. So we will not put that record on the platform if you have a record which you claim gives you the land, yet as government we know it doesn't. So that kind of record will not be on our platform. Tell us about sectional property and what it is and what it entails. So section of properties is really apartments, measurements, sectional units. You know, the law says it is a division of uh, buildings into units. So really, the, these sectional units are units that are otherwise on the same parcel of land, but it's more than one unit. If, if you own land in the village, for instance, probably just your home will be there. But in a sectional setup, there will be many units in one piece of land. So maybe one, one acre of land, for instance, can have more than 100 units. So those are sectional units. Under the Sectional Properties Act of 2020, it came into force in 2020. That law allows you, the homeowner, to have a title to that unit. In the previous legal regime, you would have what would be called a long-term lease. You would take out a long-term lease. But now the law says, the Sectional Properties Act says, as government, we ought to register a sectional unit as if we are registering land. So we'll give you a title to your apartment. 
The other thing the Section of Properties Act will do for you as a, as a homeowner, it will give you a proportionate share of the common area in that, uh, in that space. If it's one acre, for instance, and everybody has an apartment there, the common spaces will be proportionately assigned to the individual homeowners. The other thing it does, it apportions rent or rates. See, in the previous legal framework, if I wanted to sell my unit, for instance, I would have to plead with all of us, a hundred of us, to collect money and pay rent or rates. But in this framework, it apportions that rent to my unit. So I don't need another person in order to transact in my unit. I just pay my rates and go ahead. The most important thing it does, it gives you revisionary interest or reversionary interest. It means at the expiry of that lease, you have the first right as a homeowner to renew that lease in your favor. So that is the Sectional Properties Act of 2020. And what we are saying now going forward, we shall only register sectional units using the Sectional Properties Act of 2020. We are currently working with a team of uh, private sector players to develop the regulations. Regulations will allow you to implement the law. Yes, yeah, so really, in a nutshell, that is what it is. What is sectional planning and is there a deadline to submit your sectional plans as an apartment owner? A sectional plan is really an instrument that has georeference data. And georeference means data in relation to space. So we are saying, supposing this is a sectional unit because it has many many, many blocks in it. So supposing that uh, you're in this space, so the, the georeference data will tell you, will take you to that location. So we are saying each section of plan needs to give us the specific location of the parcel of land, the floor number, the unit number in relation to other units. So section of plan is really a survey instrument that helps us as government or you, the landowner, to tell where your parcel of land is and to locate your parcel of land and to locate your unit. So that is the sectional plan. The law says, upon registration of the sectional plan, I should close the mother title so that I can issue other individual, individual titles to the properties because the law does not allow me to issue multiple titles on one, on one parcel of land. So what would then happen, you bring your section of plan, which as I've said, is just data in relation to space, which will tell us where is your unit, which parcel of land, which part of Nairobi, or whichever part of the country it is. So your, your, the developer, whoever is putting up the section of units, will bring that to the ministry, the section of plan. Once we register the section of plan, we shall close the mother title to allow us to now issue individual titles to the homeowners. So that's really what the sectional plan is. It's an instrument for registration. Now, for those who've bought apartments in the last one month, can they still get their title deeds? So there are two issues with the sectional properties. There are properties which are already registered, and which, as I said earlier, we're having uh, challenges bringing them on board the National Land Information Management System because they lack geospatial data. Those ones will have to be regularized. By regularization, I mean they will have to be brought, brought on board the Sectional Properties Act of 2020. The law gives us two years to do that, to regularize. But if you come today, you have put up an apartment, you want to register, we will upfront register it using the Sectional Properties Act. So we will not, uh, we, we will not uh, give you a long-term lease and then we will start the process of regularization. No, we are saying, if you come now to the ministry, come with a sectional plan. We register the sectional plan and we follow the law and give you a title. But if your property was previously registered under long-term lease or under the Registration of Documents Act, then we shall help you as government to regularize. How does that happen? We give you surveyors, they come to your property, they create a section of plan so that we have geospatial data in order to be able to register that property properly. Now there's a question many Kenyans have been asking all over feeds. Where is the CSA's favorite destination, local or international? World over? I don't know really, I love Kenya. I travel a lot, but I still love Kenya, I love my country. And I travel a lot within Kenya too. Travel a lot, but love Kenya, brilliant. What about favorite food? <laughs> favorite food is what, milk? <laughs> I'm a Kale, so I drink milk a lot, yeah. Favorite color? I don't have one, I have blue, I love blue. I love teal, I love green, I love many colors. I love color, so my clothes are quite colorful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, now just a hint. The show is called Property Focus. Madam CS, what is your favorite property show? 
<laughs> okay, brilliant. Give us your parting shots. In terms of uh, this platform, I, I want to encourage Kenyans, all homeowners and landowners, to come on board this platform. The journey to successful deployment of a national land information management system will be complex, will be painful, will be laborious. But it's the right thing to do. For a long time, our country has struggled with management of uh, records and land data. I know that professionals, uh, surveyors, lawyers, valuers are struggling with the platform because we don't have all the data sets on the platform yet for the reasons that I had explained. I said earlier we don't have all our data sets there because we are still uh, trying to interrogate them for integrity, for completeness and for accuracy. So some records will not be there, but not to worry. If you want to transact, we have a service we are calling on-demand service. Let's say now you have your property you want to register. If you don't find it on the platform, you come to us. We will help you to go through the process and register it properly so that it comes on board the platform. So my encouragement to both professionals, homeowners, property owners, investors, let us support this platform because our country needs it. We can no longer afford to manage land in the manner in which we did before. Where we don't, you come to the ministry and I tell you, Peter, I don't know where your file is. What does that even mean? That you come to the custodian of the record and they tell you they don't know where your file is. So it's, it's a good platform. The journey to successful deployment has just started. It started about two months ago. These are chaos that we built over 58 years. We cannot eliminate it in one year, five years, 10 years. So we need to be patient with the government. We need to be patient with ourselves so that we deploy this platform successfully. And if you haven't registered Peter, please go to the platform and register. It is good for you. As I think you're thinking of buying property because you talked about a sectional unit. So register on the platform, create an account for yourself to allow you to deploy, to use the system in a, in a successful manner and encourage other Kenyans to do so as well. Well, thank you very much for coming onto the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you for taking time out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Unlock a world full of divine moments, graceful memories, and treasured experiences. Indulge in a magical fusion of nature, art, and architecture in the heart of Westlands at Kenzie Residence. Deeply connect with the most distinct features, mind-blowing views, and delightful amenities while immersed in utmost elegance. Book your studio one or two bedroom units starting from 4 million shillings and enjoy our flexible four-year payment plan. Call us today on 0728 000 002 or visit our website on www.saveproperties.com well that was very exciting and informative we had the cs and i'm just excited at the new strides the ministry is just taking and the government towards the real estate market here in kenya remember if you want any more topics on the show reach out to us on our socials and we'll be more than happy to have them and discuss with some experts remember reach out to us and let's meet again next week same time same place i've been